All right, guys, welcome back to another episode. Um, today I'm heading out on a solo camp uh, just around the lake. Found a nice little spot as I was fishing uh, a few days ago, and I think it'll be a perfect spot to set up the uh, seek out tent, um, which will be my first time using it to, uh, this year. Yeah, I'm gonna head out there soon. I got all the gear packed. Most of it was already um, packed and ready to go from that last little excursion with Lando. But uh, I got some steak and other things like that. And uh, yeah, me and Lando are gonna go head out there now. So we've got the tent, which uh, keeps in a little field craft bag. And then a goal zero just to uh, keep my cameras charged. Also got a nice sleeping cot, which uh, when I'm using the seek out, I prefer to use this because it lets me sleep elevated from the ground. I'm also taking this uh, sealed barrel bag um, this is completely waterproof, so this is where all the camera equipment and uh, a few of like the fire starting and cooking gear goes to keep it nice and dry even in the rain, or if it falls in, it'll just float. And then that bag there's more of my tools, uh, clothing, stuff like that, water, some more food. Okay. Almost forgot my fishing rod. A little topwater frog. Just let this dangle behind me. Lynn, what did I tell you about trying to sink us? I think it's a bit windy right now, but I'll tell you all about this spot. It's a um, beautiful camping spot, but it also is uh, kind of part of my childhood memories of this place, so it's pretty neat. It is windy and there is some pretty decent waves right now as you can probably tell from the rocking but we're right along shore of uh, the little peninsula at Pirate's Cove. Just trying to make it there. Go for it. Go. All right. So, this place is called Pirate's Cove for many different reasons. Uh, one of them being a skull. Oh. Oh. One of them being a skull shaped rock or somewhat skull shaped rock that uh, takes up a large portion of it. And the other reasons because it is a uh, pretty dangerous cove for boats because uh, it's got tons of sharp rocks all over and along the shores it's uh, just as difficult to get on with a canoe like this and even to walk on as you just saw. Yeah I'll tell you a bit more about why this place is called Pirates Cove later but for now I need to figure out how to haul all my gear up this uh, cliff behind me because on top of here is a amazing little peninsula lookout, which is where I plan on setting up my tent. So first things first is uh, how to get up there. All right, so uh, this canoe does not have a rope on it. So I just kind of beached it up on shore. I'll carry most of the heavier gear out and then uh, try and carry the canoe up there, I guess. There is a better 
spot for boarding or uh, <laughs> boarding, talking about pirates. There is a better spot for portaging this thing out of the water and even probably for getting onto this spot, but uh, that side's on the outside, unprotected from the cove, so the water's just way too rough for me to get in there right now. So this will have to do. Oh, buddy. That was a lot. Even Lando's tired. But, um, wow. That, it's a light canoe as far as canoes go, but it's uh, definitely not one of the lightest. And coming at something like that was an ordeal. But um, we made it, and uh, now I'll show you why I chose to come here. And uh, as I sit here and look this way, you guys can't see it quite yet, but it's definitely worth it. So yeah, take uh, about a minute, just catch my breath, and then start setting up camp. I don't know how windy it is on the mic, so if it is, I apologize. It's a very windy day, uh, which made setting this up a little bit difficult, but now it's up. Got the stove in here. I won't be needing the stove for heat uh, because it's the middle of the summer, but I did set it up just in case um, if I need to do my cooking in here or if it starts raining so that I can dry out uh, whatever equipment gets wet. But now I'm gonna get this, uh, all the living stuff in here, my bedding and everything, and then uh, start collecting some firewood. Love this cot. It's been a while since I used it. 
It's always nice, especially when you're sleeping in a tent without a floor like this one. Being able to elevate yourself just gives you an extra level of comfort, but then uh, also keeps you dry in case it really starts raining, which I've had a few times happen to me, so. Ah. Should almost go to sleep right now. Cozy. All right, so this is camp so far. Uh, inside, I haven't done too much to organize or clean yet, but got the bed set up. So, just got most of my gear sitting right over here. As you can see, there's a lot of room in here for one guy. Um, I got my cot with my lighter sleeping bag, and then my air pillow. Got a goal zero for charging my camera batteries. And then I've also hooked up the stove here, which uh, has my pan on top of it. I'm not really planning on using it for cooking this trip. I'll probably do that over the fire, but worse comes to worse, I can uh, cook in here as well. Here you see uh, there's this old fire pit uh, from a previous camper but since it's a pretty windy day and we only just recently got the fire ban taken off I'm gonna look for some stones to build this a bit higher uh, preferably with a higher rock wall on this side to stop the wind from interfering too much or blowing sparks into my tent since it's uh, pretty close by so um, you can see behind me the Sun's kind of starting to go down still got a few uh, about two hours of light left so uh, got to make the most of it got a bit of wood uh, these smaller pieces that I was just slicing up with a little handsaw will go inside in case I need to get that fire going and then I'll just use uh, the odd bits of dead wood and driftwood in this cove for the outdoor fire yeah time to get to work trick when you're uh, setting up your camping chairs that took me a while to learn is uh, just hooking the chair bag onto the back of the uh, well the backrest before putting on the cover that way it becomes part of the chair and isn't a uh, another loose piece that could be potentially lost which uh, we have lost a few over the years from not doing something like this but this is just the easiest way. Keeps the entire chair in one package. Oh. What a nice day.
Oh, come on. My bad. Well, it's a good sign anyway. Got one strike on the top eight. Um, this may not be the best time or spot for it, but it's the uh, only thing I brought, stupidly. But the satisfaction of catching something on a topwater bait will outrule um, any missed opportunities if I brought something a little more efficient for this coastline kind of casting, but we'll see. Either way, just nice to be out in the sun, enjoying nature. Well, we didn't have any luck fishing, but uh, we had fun, didn't we, Lando? Yeah. Lando's been chasing squirrels and just having a blast being able to run free out here. Um, it's all crown land in this area, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of acres of crown land, so it's uh, as remote as can be. You could walk for weeks that direction and uh, not find any sign of civilization or other life, which is a pretty neat feeling. Really puts into perspective how small of an area we've actually settled in, at least here in Canada. A very, very, very small minority of uh, the actual landmass is uh, inhabited. Which is partially what I love so much about this place. Um, it's remoteness, it still feels so untouched when I get to go out and explore it, either by overland vehicle with uh, my family, um, or by on camping trips like this. And even just living up here is an absolute blessing to be able to be a part of that. I think I might get a fire going just for pleasure right now and then uh, as soon as it gets down to coals then I might start cooking up some dinner. Still got uh, a, a while before the sun goes down but I'm pretty hungry after uh, all that work of paddling over here in the wind and then carrying the canoe up and all the gear and just setting up camp. So burnt a lot of calories and now it's time to gain some back. So I have my old LT knife, I've had this for many years, that's why it looks the way it does, with a ferrocerium rod. And I'll try and spark a fire, but I didn't bring any like pre-made tinders, which would have made this whole process very easy. So uh, I've got some dried lichen here and some pine needles. I'll see if I can get a fire going with that, although um, not too, too sure about that. And just in case, I did bring a little uh, butane jet lighter, which is always nice to have just in case it rains or something. And in case your fire lighting skills uh, with flint and steel aren't too, too honed like mine. But I would feel like a lot more of a man if I could do with this, so <laughs> we'll give it a try first. There we go. Oh, there's a fire. No way. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. There we are. Ha <laughs> ha. Still got it. Now that the fire started, I'm going to kind of clear some of the brush and pine needles from around the fire ring. Just as an extra protection against the fire spreading, although my rock wall is pretty sturdy. And I also have um, a bucket of water on standby. Now that the fire is lit on this corner, I'm gonna try and set up some wood farther away so then it slowly burns back against my firewall. The nice thing is this whole area is surrounded by wood like this. Well, there you have fire. I'm uh, happy I didn't have to 
use a butane torch. Looks like I won't have to be revoking my man card today. I think that lighting fires with flint and steel is, uh, no matter how many times you do it, it always gives you kind of a sense of pride. Um, it's just like using the bowstring uh, or any other of the more primal fire starting methods. Lighting fires and uh, learning different fire lighting skills is always something, has always been something that's interested me. Um, I've always been into bushcraft and stuff, so it's been a long time since I've done that though, so it feels good that I could still manage. Fire lighting and the techniques to fire lighting is kind of like a man's birthright, it feels like. Um, it's something that was so necessary for thousands of years and uh, it's still necessary today. You never know when you'll need it. If I was in a survival situation and I was stuck out here and I needed heat, knowing how to do that with uh, flint and steel or even if I didn't have a knife with a bowstring, which uh, I would like to show at some point in another video is uh, a life-saving skill. So it's always good to use it when possible. So even if you have a butane torch, first try with the flint steel will make you feel better about yourself but it'll also keep your skills uh, sharpened and ready to go when you need it. Alright that's enough philosophy about fire I just feel good about myself and uh, I'm gonna let these burn down to coals and then get a steak going. All right, so while that olive oil heats up, I'll show you what's for dinner. Got uh, half a baguette here, which I'm gonna toast on the olive oil uh, to get it nice and crispy. And then in here, uh, I've got a pre-seasoned steak with some rosemary, mushrooms, and uh, some butter that I'll throw on after. And I'll make a little steak sandwich. Yeah, I want you guys to witness how good this bread looks. Ooh. Ah, 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 yummy. Hot. Ooh, perfect. Ah. Butter. Rosemary. And our beautiful, beautiful slab of New York, it looks like, drip. Might as well throw those mushrooms in there. Ah, oh, yeah. Looking good and crispy. Let the steak get some of that butter and olive oil, and then let these sear on this side. All right, so I'm gonna attempt to render down some of that fat on the side, just by holding it there, like that for a little bit. Oh, that is a shame. Whatever. Lando can have that piece. Huh. Ugh. 
Alrighty. Time to eat. Steak, sandwich, and I sliced up some of the mushrooms, put them on, and then got a couple of the other mushrooms just on the plate. Mm. This is exactly why I love camping. Right, Lando? Oh yeah, you have some steak. Here, I'll get it for you. The bigger pieces are still too hot. This stuff should be good. There you go, buddy. Yum. You don't need a point for that. It's right in front of you. Eat it. Oh. I love you. <laughs> Even though you kind of stink. You're still my friend. Yeah. No more yet. Not yet. There's more for me though. Yep. Turned out to be a beautiful evening. Uh, we didn't really get a sunset because there was a uh, thin layer of clouds uh, right at the bottom where it usually crests. Um, but it's just a beautiful, beautiful evening. The wind died down and yet there are still no mosquitoes. Uh, knock on wood, but so far I haven't seen a single mosquito, which for this time of year is Not very normal. They should be kind of uh, petering out in the next coming weeks, but Not having them at least while I eat and I'm outside with Lando is a uh, Definitely a blessing So I'm gonna enjoy it finish my dinner and then Probably head back inside and have a nice sleep Well, me and Lando are gonna bed down for tonight. As you can hear, Lando's digging his own little bed on the floor there. Um, the sun just went down. It's still got a bit of uh, brightness outside, but I'm gonna go to bed a little bit early and try to wake up for the sunrise, because I'm sure it'll be beautiful, but it's uh, a weekend camp, so. If I sleep in a bit, that's all right too. Had a beautiful day, beautiful paddle, amazing meal. So, couldn't have asked for a better camping night. All right, uh, I guess I'll see you guys in the morning. Alright guys, good morning. Um, it was a pretty wet night. It started raining about midnight and then uh, kept up and it's still going. We had a couple pretty insane downpours that came swooshing through and uh, it's still off and on now. Right now it's a bit of a quiet time which is perfect for filming. But uh, man, it's been really, really raining and I peeked my head outside and it looks like there's some pretty dark clouds rolling in still. So. Uh, I'm going to take this little pause to make some breakfast, and then uh, I'll decide what to do after that. Got a little fire going. Uh, I probably should have saved more wood for cooking, but I'm sure that'll get the pan hot enough just to do a few eggs, 
yeah, we'll let that get uh, heating up. The pan shouldn't take too, too long. And then we'll get breakfast cooking. That's the awesome thing about these tents though, is with the amount of heat this puts off, even with a small fire like what I have in there, it really heats up this entire room, which uh, in the summertime, like I mentioned, isn't really needed, but this fall will definitely be a handy thing to have. It's good for cooking though, especially on rainy days like this. Alrighty, so for breakfast, we've got two sausage patties and two eggs. Uh, I'm still pretty full actually from that big dinner last night. So I might share some of this with Lando. I've actually also got myself a croissant here with some cheese. So, gonna make myself another sandwich. All right, now we'll add those sausages. Mm -mm -mm. Nice breakfast croissant. All right, I'm sure it looks messy, but uh, when you're hungry and you're out camping after a long rainy night, I'm sure it will taste very nice. Better than Tim Hortons. So I um, checked the forecast on the Zolio, and uh, this time I actually have the weather station for this area. It looks like right now I'm kind of in the eye of the storm. Uh, a little break um, but in about two hours it should start downpouring again and continue all night so I'll probably finish eating breakfast might do a bit of fishing and then uh, I'll probably pack up and head back to the shop because there's a few little things I need to do there but I also have to start editing this video for this weekend but that's for later right now I'm gonna enjoy breakfast in the woods while I can I think I'm going to start packing up um, the packing up process usually takes longer than the setup because I'm not the most organized camper. But uh, I'll pack up the tent and my bedding and stuff and get all the camera gear ready to go and then start the canoe paddle back. Which means I should arrive uh, back at the cabin a few hours before the sun sets. So it'll be perfect timing and then I'll start editing up this video. By the time I get back it... Uh, should be when the rain starts up again so i think i i think i have the perfect window of set down and canoe ride without getting all my equipment wet or wetter than it already is and then uh, i should be nice and dry inside the cabin for the worst of the storm but we'll see that's the plan for now at least i hope you guys liked this camping video i know it's something a little bit different a lot of you were asking me to do something like this so I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I love getting any chance to come out here and just spend some time in nature, even if it's a, a shorter trip like this one. I definitely had a great time and uh, some pretty good food, especially, you know, I'm not really uh, much of a cook, but preparing some of the meals before I came really helped with uh, the quality of food I eat. Usually it's just a can of beans or tuna. So this was quite nice. But like I was saying, thanks for watching and thank you to all of you who have subscribed to the Patreon channel and are supporting uh, this whole journey. I really appreciate it. And so does Lando. Yes, you do. But we will see you guys next week.